The Sean Woods Show has been brought to you by Jack Rowe Insurance, serving all your insurance needs. The Citizens Bank, Moorhead's only locally owned bank. Richard White Wood Products, a premier exporter of Kentucky hardwoods. Lakeside Christian Academy in Moorhead, educating for eternity. Visit us online at lakesidechristianacademy.org. Standifer Builders, commercial and residential paving in West Liberty. Larry Fannin, Chevrolet Buick GMC. U.S. Bank, all of us serving you. The Ira Kilburn Law Office. Commercial Bank of West Liberty, a source of strength in our community for more than 100 years. North Cut and Son Home for Funerals, serving others as we would like to be served since 1976. And J.W. Wood and Quality Staves in Wallingford, proud to be part of Eagle Nation. Hi, everyone, and welcome in to this Sunday afternoon edition of the Sean Wood Show from the campus of Moorhead State University and today from the Lynn Miller Room at the Academic Athletic Center. As always, alongside the Eagle basketball coach, I'm David Patrick. And Sean, the old adage, very true, defense wins games. That's what happened Thursday night against EKU. It did, David, and our guys really came in, locked in, tuned in, and uh, – was not going to uh, let anything fall through the cracks. They were determined. You know, we, we kind of ticked off a little bit after that Tennessee trip of letting two get away, you know, lo losing the Belmont by six and then the Tennessee State by two. Um, and we know it's getting crunch time. And uh, our guys answered the bell. And uh, I was very proud of them. National TV game, too, always helps recruiting. No doubt about it. And uh, people see, you know, kids see that, you know, if you're going to come here, you're going to play defense. You know, we're going to let you play offense, but defense wins championships. And uh, that was the most high power team in our league. And to keep them at 51 points, almost 30 points under their scoring, you know, 20 some points under their scoring average was pretty good for us last night. Absolutely. Stay tuned. When we come back, we'll head to the Eagle locker room for the pregame message, Coach Wood to his players, and also highlights of the Moorhead State win over EKU. That's next on the Sean Wood Show. Be in attack mode all day, okay? From the jump, attack mode. Under control, but attack mode. Does everybody understand that? Yes, attack mode. All right? Be disciplined. Finish the game. Defensively. Transition. Guard without fight. I want everybody down and ready. And that, you even be in attack mode that way. Where can I get a steal? All right? No, I ain't leaving. All right? Be tenacious. Be, be focused. Raise them. Does everybody understand that? Yes, I ain't getting back door. I ain't giving up a three. I'm helping early, and I'm getting back to my man. Yes, All right? Talk to the guy who's guard. Catch up! Catch up! Whoever it is. Everybody understand that? Talking. Enthusiasm. Everybody got that? Yes, All right? Team defense. All right? And communicate. Fellas. We don't play. We play on the road, which is tough. Everything's ugly, right? Yes, huh? We beat this team. Should have beat them double figures. Then they go and they beat two teams that we should have beat, but we didn't beat them. Because we weren't ready to play. Now stop, stop, stop looking in the mirror and being ashamed of yourself because I ain't ready to play. It's college basketball. This is where you make your mark. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. There ain't one to play on this team that can't play. But you got to be ready to play. It ain't that you can't play. You got to be ready to play. Sean, great message in the locker room and a great fan support. I'll tell you what. Billy Reader, our former player, our five man last year, is back getting his master's and, uh, I mean, getting his degree. And part of his job is for the sports information department is to go out and get all the kids to come to the games, and I, he's doing a heck of a job. From the tip, David, I was un very unhappy. We had a mishap, and Corbin was late, and the guy got a dunk. But we got that point back, right? right I mean, right, right back. And then Corbin comes back and hits the three. So um, that they kind of you know covered that. But I, t I thought our guys were just really locked in, David. Sean, EKU led for all of 31 seconds. From that point on, you guys took control. Well, you know, as you saw in my speech, we had to be razor sharp, and I thought our guys were razor sharp. I mean, we got every offensive rebound that you're supposed to get, and uh, everybody came in ready to play to contribute, which, you know, as you saw right there in Malik Maitland. Good penetrating kick out, and Corbin Collins ready to shoot the ball. 
Sean Malik has given you some great minutes. Well, he's a pure point guard, and uh, Corbin is a, guard, a combo guard, but Malik can really break you down and make other people better. Now Corbin can play off the ball. And with this and growing injury, you know, it's not that much pressure in him handling, pre you know, going against pressure and guarding the ball, too. So Malik's doing a good job. That was a great move right there, high off the glass. Uh -huh. That was vintage Sean Woods there. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know what I was thinking? Oh, man. Uh, Line now getting caught in the high post. Didn't give up on the play. Anthony Leach makes a big time spin move right there. Anthony Leach was ready last night, boy. I mean, that's probably the best he's played uh, since he's played for me. 16 points, 8 rebounds. You mentioned about that spin move. I mean, that was just nasty. And speaking of nasty, great move at the basket by Miguel. Shot clock going down, and Brent still had the, you know, poise to go in there and make a play. And Miguel finished with the left hand big time. Ball moved around, and, you know, Moon with his vintage, Vinny Johnson pull up jump shot. And we played with great patience. You know, we took what the defense gave us. You know, that was a great cut by, by Brent, but it was a, a, a really good pass by, uh, by Rico Marrero, I think that was. Anthony Leachy getting an offensive rebound put back. You know, we, we just took our time against their zone, David, and um, really uh, – Caught, tried to carve their defense out and then Rico Morrell hitting you know he's been hitting that shot as of late knock on wood but that's been his spot right there at the top of the key high post area ball movement look at this dunk by Anthony Alici boy it, 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 as a coach how, how fun to see that well, it's fun because, you know, your guys aren't settling and they're doing exactly what you ask them to do when you work, how you work on it in practice uh, as far as an uh, uh, execution standpoint because we knew Eastern was going to play a lot of zone and we just couldn't settle for threes. You know, all the, the last two games they played, the teams that they played, Tennessee State and Belmont just settled for threes and we didn't want to do that. Another offensive rebound by Brent Arrington. Just a hustle play, big-time hustle play. He didn't score a lot of points, but he did everything right last night. Sean, you beat him on the boards 34-27, and uh, that was a huge difference in the game. No doubt about it. You know, we knew that's where we can make our mark at, and, and we made sure we took care of that because we did not rebound him like we wanted to at their place. Mm. Anthony Leach again, another tip dunk. He, he played so good last night. If he can continue, if we can bottle that up for the rest of the season, season David, we're going to be pretty good. Stay with us when we come back. Highlights of Moorhead State's game with Belmont University at Johnson Arena. That's next on the Sean Wood Show. Guard without fouling, fellas. Do the exact same thing we did. Have fun doing it. It was fun last time, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Just guard like, man, you ain't going by me. What's up? And you walking, too? Huh? You ain't that good. Yes, Anybody could be good going beeline to the basket. You know what I'm saying? But if you got a spin, stop, and all that, no. Nah. All right? Ball pressure, high hands, make them turn what? Exactly. exactly. Tight switches come together. Transition defense, post defense. Listen, let's post our will. Let's go. Backcourt loop just outside the line. Comes across it now on descent. Working high and left on the dribble. Picks it up, bounces the cutting grabs left hand. They did that to the Eagles in Nashville. Across to Barnett, toward the left corner in the loop. Back across to the right corner. Branchaw sets his feet, shoots up the three in Kansas. Down by seven. Around the left side, Marrero stops at the wing, out to Collins, high left, wide right, Arrington down the far sideline, Beeman cuts in, back to the trailing Collins, right side, Arrington, around for three, Smith! Luke on the move, driving in free throw line. Mercer knocked down as he set a screen, Luke looking, bounce to the cutting Bradshaw for the easy two, and that back door cut way too easy right there. Eagles on the offensive end with 8.45 to go in the half. Descent at the left hash, hands it back to Collins, he'll drive baseline right. In traffic, puts it up with one hand, fire off the glass, and down it goes good. Barnett to his right, five to shoot, Barnett, right wing three, uh-uh, baseline left rebound. McLean back to the goal, the runner off the glass and through. 16 to shoot. Rico puts it down. Banging in on Brad's turns, hooks, misses side of the rim. Rebound, Arrington. Wide left, Maitland. He'll shoot the three and gets it. The 
Miguel on the move, takes it toward the baseline, retreats to the corner, back out to Mahesh Marrero, wide right, Maitland down the near wing, off to Arrington. Moves in, jump and shoot from 20, spins in and out and back in again. That's a two-pointer by Brent Arrington. Maitland across the line with 14.23 to go. Right angle drive, back up top, Marrero down the right wing. Arrington around for a three, got it! Three. Three. Arrington with 15. Again, it's a 10-point game. Eight to shoot, seven. Maitland, free throw line, right side Arrington, turning it left, turns, free throw line, jumper, got it! Windler, challenge, down low, Brad, fights to the goal, puts it up, block from behind, Beaver with the block, Guerrero has it to Maitland. Maitland down the left sideline, Arrington fakes, baseline left, jump and shoot from 17, got it, we're tied at 59! Floating toward that left hash on Barnett. Bounce left of the lane. Gaines backing his man down. Takes it to the right. Dumped down low. Alici Lim. And Mohead State has a lead. Nine for Alici and it's 61-59 MSU. Runs the right wing. Back to his left. Wide left. Arrington. 16 to shoot. Arrington on the drive to the hole. The scoop. The score. Arrington with 21. Six to shoot along the wing. Moon. Four to shoot. Back out, Arrington. Three to shoot, two to shoot. The runner from the left angle. Uh-oh. Offensive rebound, Moreno. Put back, yes. Kennedy foul. <laughs> Xavier with the ball out toward the left hash. Dribbling for Moorhead State, the offensive end. Toward the left corner. Gaines in the lane, Moreno. Drives in, left-hand scoop. Off the glass, and away we go. 18 for Ringo. 116 to go. Right of the logo, offensive end, Luke. Trying to get the pick from Smith. Picks up the dribble out front. Bounce left, cutting Bradshaw for the layup. It's in, he's fouled. Count the basket. Again, the backdoor cut. Alici, two shots here. Moorhead down by one. First one up. Good, we're tied. Alici. For the lead. Squats down, fires it and cans it. Moorhead State in front. 78 77 Eagle. Backcourt Luke. Luke hands to Bradshaw, bobbles it. Five seconds to go. Coming right with it into Alici. Bates fires, misses. Rebound, Moorhead State. Beeman got it down. The Eagles win. The Eagles win. The Eagles win. What a victory here this afternoon. Johnson Arena. Oh my goodness. Your final score from LST Johnson Arena in Moorhead, Kentucky. In this OVC contest, Moorhead State a winner over Belmont 78 to 77. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Leave two. OVC Time now for the Eagle Profile, brought to you by U.S. Bank. All of us serving you. Welcome back to the Sean Wood Show. And our Eagle Profile today is our Associate uh, Athletic Director over Compliance, Richard Fletcher. And Fletch, to me, you know, you, you're a jack of all trades. You, you're a former trainer. I lean on you for that. Uh, you're our compliance officer. You keep us compliant. Uh, you're probably the I've, I've been at five, six places now, and by far, from top to bottom, you know, a lot of compliance officers walk around like lawyers, and coaches don't like being around them. Sure. But with you, I love being around you because you, you're not the, the watchdog. You're the guy who is doing your job, and, and your job is to protect us and keep us compliant. Um, there's some, been some new NCAA rules that, that, that's been brought down. Um, as far as men's basketball is concerned, uh, let the people know out there what are some of them and uh, how it, how has it affected us, you know, from your day-to-day -day deal and and making sure that we're, we're compliant with it 
and the changes that we've had to make as far as our universe is concerned or athletic department? I think the biggest change has been we are going to a new model when it comes to initial eligibility. Initial eligibility is when we look at a student athlete come out of high school and say, do they meet their core and will they be eligible at the Division One level? Used to be, if you think about uh, the ACT score and also to the, the core GPA, core is a GPA is a, is a GPA inside your English, your math, your science, social sciences, and also your electives. You break that down and you take a look. They have to have 16 of completion of those of those uh, core courses that we talked about. Now instead of having a 2.0 with a sliding scale in the ACT, it's gone to a 2.3. Right. So it's making it extremely more difficult for the moderate to low student to be able to play Division One sports. Right. So we do a lot, as you know, Coach. We do a lot of projecting out. We'll take a student athlete their first couple years and say, here's what they need in order to be eligible by the end of their senior year. We spend a lot of time as a staff with the men's basketball to talk about this is a student we're interested in. Here's what they need in order to be eligible. It's all about projection. It's all about catching a young man early and then helping them to be successful in the classroom by saying, here's what you need to do if you want to get a scholarship. That way we can project them out and get them eligible. And as you know, you and I are really big on communication. Absolutely. And we've done a great job, my four years here, of, 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 of that. Um, what is it that, you know, some compliance officers get frustrated with coaches and uh, because coaches try to, you know, not communicate, sure. try to go cut corners and things like that. I don't. I mean, in your opinion, I hope you know we haven't done that. Absolutely. And w what makes because dealing with us as men's, men's basketball, what do you like? You know, sure. why do you like dealing with us? And be, and, and because you, you you like dealing with us, let the people know from my standpoint because right. you know we, I'm I'm recruiting every kid out there in the state Absolutely. of Kentucky and everywhere else. Why? What are we doing that that is right that you appreciate and keep Absolutely. makes your job easier? Coach, as you have you already mentioned, I'm a certified athletic trainer by background, so I keep my certification now in order to help out this institution. Mm -hmm. So the relationship that we develop as an athletic trainer with a coach is the same development that I try to use as a compliance person. Right. It's always easier when your coaching staff asks questions. We always ask if our coach has a question. Doesn't matter the time of day, email or call. And we get a lot of emails. We get a lot of phone calls from the coaching staff, especially men's basketball. That's what I like. I like that someone says are we allowed to can yeah. we do this and right. if you know there's there's a bunch of rules out there. there's a bunch of bylaws that are black and white that says yes you can no you cannot there's also some bylaws out there that are called interpretive mm -hmm. which means it's a gray matter can you do this and if so how do we need to go about that which bylaw can we use that's what I appreciate most about men's basketball I get that phone call I get that time I have an open door policy which means if you have time you come in sit down and we'll talk about it we'll look through it we'll look at the bylaws we'll get we'll ask the OVC we'll ask the NCAA can we do this and if so well, how do we need to go about it that's my appreciation for men's basketball because that's the communication level we have I would much rather say how can we go about it and do it legally versus oh, I made this mistake right. and then it becomes a bylaw violation right well people out there here you have it. Richard Fletcher who's behind the scenes but if you watch our games he's right next to me at the at, at the scores table and he and I have a little connection I can't really mention that but we're undefeated when I don't forget to say it to him and um, I'll tell you what he, he's been a big help for me in my four years here at Moorhead State University and I hope we can continue because we do have a great relationship and you know it's like a family you know sometimes we disagree but we agree to disagree and that's what it's all about uh, to make sure that our men's basketball program is compliant and and we're doing the best thing that we possibly can to make sure Moorhead basketball is at the top of the OVC, behind the scenes and on the court. And we'll be back with more of the Sean Wood Show right after this. Welcome back into the Sean Wood Show here on the CW Lexington and Sean the other night, Thursday night before the EKU game, a special recognition for the team physician of Moorhead State who's been involved uh, certainly in a consulting way with MSU Athletics uh, for more than 40 years. Dr. Thomas Fawcett was recognized. Uh, the, the training room here at MSU will be dedicated in his honor. Sean, he's given a lot of service to the university and I thought it was a real honor for him. Well, it was. You know, uh, a guy who served, especially in the medical field, for our student athletes for over 40 years is big time. Yes. Uh, every student athlete who's played here at the Moorhead, at Moorhead <laughs> State within that time has had some type of uh, relationship yes. with him, uh, some more than others, unfortunately. But 
you know, Dr. Foss has always been there, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think it's very deserving uh, from our from from his honor standpoint because he's given his time uh, and, and, his, and his efforts to Moorhead State University uh, athletics. And uh, kudos to Dr. Fawcett. You know, we'll see your name. You know, well deserving because you have been a major part and a major help to all the student athletes that's come through Moorhead State University in over 40 years. And Sean, it's a testament to him because I'm sure over the years that he's had lots of opportunities to move on, to go other places, but his heart was here, not only with Moorhead State University, but also with Round County High School. No doubt about it. My son plays for Round yes. County now, and uh, you know, he's at the games, he's consulting, he's helping out, things like that. So he's always around. He's a fixture in this community. and. Uh, well liked and well deserved because he's taking care of a lot of kids, a lot of people per se, uh, around Round County and um, you know Round County and Moorhead, Kentucky and Moorhead State University is very fortunate to have a humble, uh, very loyal servant in, in, in Dr. Fawcett. Absolutely. Thank you so much for watching on this Sunday afternoon on the CW Lexington and on behalf of the Eagle basketball coach, I'm David Patrick and we will see you next week right here on the Sean Wood Show. The Sean Woods Show has been brought to you by Jack Rowe Insurance, serving all your insurance needs. The Citizens Bank, Moorhead's only locally owned bank. Richard White Wood Products, a premier exporter of Kentucky hardwoods. Lakeside Christian Academy in Moorhead, educating for eternity. Visit us online at lakesidechristianacademy.org. Standard for Builders, commercial and residential paving in West Liberty. Larry Fannin, Chevrolet Buick GMC. U.S. Bank, all of us serving you. The Ira Kilburn Law Office. Commercial Bank of West Liberty, a source of strength in our community for more than 100 years. North Cut and Son Home for Funerals, serving others as we would like to be served since 1976. And J.W. Wood and Quality Staves in Wallingford, proud to be part of Eagle Nation.